Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Rogers, President and CEO of uh, the Texas Heart Institute, and I'm joined here in the studio today by Dr. Jagat Narula, who just gave grand rounds at the Texas Heart Institute. It was a wonderful grand rounds today, uh, discussing uh, what I thought was some of the most interesting and important data about atherosclerosis and the progression of atherosclerosis and, and how we should be thinking about characterizing plaques. I'd encourage people who didn't watch Grand Rounds to watch it, and uh, if, you've, uh, if you did watch it, I would encourage you to watch it again, uh, because I think there were so many important pearls uh, in your talk today. So thank you for joining us just here in the studio to spend you know five or 10 minutes just talking a little bit more, taking a deeper dive into some of the topics. It's 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 uh, truly an honor uh, to be here, Joe, and uh, I'm grateful for the invitation. And I, as I said uh, when I started my uh, grand rounds today, that uh, it was more emotional than anything else, because uh, 1988 I brought my father here for a seven vessel bypass by Dr. Cooley and Dr. Rule, and uh, he returned home uh, completely recovered. We came with 23% ejection fraction, returned home with 65% ejection fraction, not needing any nitroglycerin pills and living 16 years thereafter to die of cancer. And uh, so I, I have an emotional connect here and it was truly gratifying uh, to come back here after 30 plus years. Well, it was our great fortune that uh, you took some time to, to come today. Just. For those of you who um, don't know Dr. Narula and his recent move to Houston about a, a little more than a year ago, uh, you were the executive vice president of the University of Texas uh, Health Science Center here in Houston. And, but equally importantly, you're the chief academic officer and really guiding, I think, all of the academics in that organization. And we're very fortunate to have you in the area. I know that um, you've been um, you've enriched so, mon so much of our cardiovascular uh, programs across the Texas Medical Center just by by your presence, and so we're so happy that you we could we could attract you from New York to to Houston. Honor has been entirely mine. Thank you. So I, I thought that I, I wanted to explore a couple of topics with you today, and, and one of them started with the question that I asked you after uh, after your lecture, and it was really around how you <clears throat> recommend that we begin approach approaching screening. Uh, for people using CT-based methodologies to really characterize not only calcium scores, but uh, you know how you would begin thinking about characterizing early plaque and how that should drive our decision making. You know, many of the people who will watch this segment uh, that we're taping today are going to go back to the office this afternoon, or they'll be in the office on Monday morning. How should they use the information that you presented about plaque characterization using CT uh, in their patient population? Uh, coronary artery calcium, as you said, it, it does very well. Uh, the reason being that uh, most of the time when there is an atherosclerosis, there is calcium there. Uh, whether it is because of the macrophage death or whatever else it is. And uh, the, the calcification normally can be seen as almost a universal surrogate for the presence of atherosclerosis. When uh, it is very early, uh, uh, for example, uh, in early 30s or mid 30s or even to 40s in men or uh, even later in, in women, calcium may still not be there, and we might miss out on the plaques. And that is where the importance of these early CT and geography comes in. Normally, uh, the most important thing that we really need to do is we really need to look at the risk factors. We have to be cognizant of that. Important part for that is that the way we treat with the, the treat risk factors is not the way we should be doing that. Uh, we are normally looking for the extreme elevation of the risk factors. Your patients come to you and you tell them that your sugar is borderline or uh, your cholesterol is borderline, your blood pressure is borderline. This is the borderlines <laughs> which really create a problem for us. So we've got to be very, very careful uh, about that, that we don't have to really go uh, after the extreme elevations. And secondly, the normal values that we call, they are the usual values of a risk factor uh, uh, of the population which is at high risk of dying of a premature atherosclerotic or vascular disease. So basically the normal values are usual values. We really need to know what the normal values are or what the ideal values are. So 
uh, risk factors would still be the most important way to go. The second important thing would be looking at the CT angiograms and when would I recommend early CT angiogram is when a uh, subject comes to me and uh, it is 10 years before his father died of a heart attack or had a heart attack, that would be the time that I would like to start looking at them mm. uh, with the CT angiograms uh, so as to have a deeper dive into their uh, disease process. And then using the lipid lowering therapy, I think it has uh, um, uh, proven to be the most important um, anchor for uh, uh, the uh, disease prevention. Yeah. You obviously have spent a lot of your time uh, professionally thinking about cardiac imaging. And we focus today primarily on using CT as an imaging modality to understand the pathobiology of atherosclerotic disease. What do you think are the next imaging tools that will emerge over the next decade that might help us characterize vulnerability of plaques, progression, and the, the, I thought the comments that you made today about sort of serially looking at progression of plaques and the, the remodeling of the vessels was so important. But what, what's coming, Jagat, do you think in the future that will refine our knowledge uh, from CT? Uh, I think that we have found the right uh, imaging test already. CT angio angiogram is probably the most important thing that we could have developed or we would develop in terms of uh, assessment of the coronary plaques. The only important thing which is remaining is its right application and uh, our willingness to use it more commonly. Uh, the, as far as the interpretation is concerned, uh, I think the AI tools which are now becoming available should be able to predict the likelihood of having an event in a much better manner than what we do today. Automatic assessment is also extremely important, looking not only at the plaque, but looking at the total vasculature as a part of the whole patient, and uh, then going with the recommendation. It will be the one which will be able to also triage the patients in terms of uh, whether they would require the uh, primary prevention with the optimal medical therapy, which are the patients who should be sent for revascularization because it can give you the anatomic uh, characterization as well as functional characterization, and then also look at the plaque. And as you have recently seen uh, our uh, uh, fast track cabbage study, uh, which was presented by Dr. Uh, Patrick Siroyas recently in the TCT, where uh, uh, we could even send the patient straight after doing the CT angiography for the coronary bypass surgeries. And uh, except one case, there was no need for looking at the invasive coronary angiograms in those uh, subjects. So I think we have, we have got almost everything covered with this test and uh, uh, with the AI and better interpretation, we should be able to automate uh, uh, the, uh, the characterization and more important than that, would we be able to identify those plaques which are likely to progress over a period of time based on their uh, baseline uh, findings, mm -hmm. that would be the most important goal for the coming years and investigation. Do you perceive that there will be a, a new serum biomarker that either adds to what we're understanding from coronary CT or could supplant uh, coronary CT? What, what are your thoughts about about biomarkers? So the future obviously is in omics plus the imaging. So we have to genomically or proteomically characterize the disease. And on the other hand, we have to do it with the phenomic uh, biomarkers, quite like uh, imaging. Uh, future for that matter, for any, any medical condition is going to be dependent upon the omics on one hand and imaging on the other hand, regardless whether we are treating coronary artery disease or anything else. And the last thing I wanted to explore with you, Jagat, just um, as we wrap up, you know, we all have the challenges in the office of um, getting authorization for tests, et cetera. What do we know about the cost effectiveness of 
coronary CT and looking at plaque morphology and looking at, um, at, at coronary FFR in terms of it being a cost-effective approach, especially for this lower risk patient population? Uh, it will be extremely important, again, that uh, we have our investigations completed. Uh, we do not have the uh, um, substantial data in terms of the prospective analyses uh, for the cost effectiveness, and I think that data are the most important um, uh, deficiency in our, our proposals at this time. Uh, if you look at the CT and geography, it is one of the most recent uh, uh, imaging uh, modality as compared to when we look at the echocardiography or the nuclear imaging and all, where the, uh, the results are available for 40 years now. And uh, so I think we are getting into that uh, arena where it should be soon characterized and we should be able to uh, define the importance of CT and geography uh, uh, better. Uh, ischemia trial and uh, other trials have uh, uh, all that data uh, available. They have CT characterization of all their patients. They have uh, uh, echocardiograms and uh, nuclear tests. And I think that data should be able to inform us better than what we know today. It has been such a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I, I, we'll be sure to invite you back next year <laughs> to, uh, to, you know, to give us another update and to expand our knowledge in, in this space. But Jagat, thank you so much for taking the time today to visit THI. It was truly a pleasure and I'm always available. I'm around the corner, <laughs> less than a mile away, so any day. Thank you. Thank you.